this world we are here for one and only purpose and that purpose is to throw away all of the nonsense that been attached to us from the early days of our childhood, youth, the filth and the husks that been attached to us by meeting the wrong people, people that couldn't give us what that we really needed. And now, after receiving a wake-up call from heaven, we are now obligated to throw all of those coverings and all of the imaginations that have been attached to us now. There are people that are very attached to the outside world and they are being very impressed by the colors and the smells and the beauty but the Torah calls all of that Sheker Chen Vehevel Ayofi it's the lie of beauty it's not the real beauty on Yosef HaTzadik that he's the righteous man on him it's written that he was the beauty and the glory of the generation. Only a person that is able to throw himself into the depths of faith without paying no attention to whatever he goes through in life can accomplish perfection in Avodat Hashem while serving Hashem. And I'll explain to you what that I mean. There are people, and that's the most simple example, that when they see a huge house, uh, wealth, money, cars, they will be so amazed and fascinated that even if they were learning Torah one second before or thinking about Hashem, they will drop it off and they will forget Hashem because they saw something so amazing, so beautiful. That's a simple example for that. That's an interesting day that we're going through. <laughs> so that is something that we can understand very easily. that there can be a person that is willing to do something good and when something that is less important grab his attention so he will drop the learning or his spiritual development process or whatever good thing that he's doing and gonna follow his lusts, his desires, the rest of nonsense of this world. So this is something that it's easy to deal with because if you see that you're doing something important and then you stop for something silly, so it's easy to recognize, say, okay, look at me, I'm like, I'm doing nonsense, like I'm wasting my time, you can see that. But there are thinner and more delicate aspects of that mistake. For an example, when a person really tries to commit himself to Hashem, and the Creator of the universe starts sending messages to you, start communicating with you, giving you signs, waking you up, and taking you somewhere. And then someone else is coming to you and offering you to do something else that is also inside of the world of Torah. Like, come, be a rabbi, teach in this school, or maybe do something else, maybe learn how to write, to be a sofirstam, or whatever. Something that you cannot say on it, no, it's wrong. No, it's a sin, it's an avera. Someone tells you, hey, come to pray in a minyan, there is a minyan, we need you. And you know that it's going to take you now 30 minutes to go and drive, and like, 
It's confusing. Now in that situation, you're not so sure what the Hashem really wants from you. Hashem, what do you really want from me now in my life? That gray area, that's the area of the free choice. In that point, only in that point, where light and darkness are mixed together, that it's hard for you to recognize and to separate between good and bad, over there, that's the main test of our life. There you need to choose. How are you going to choose? It looks the same. That's a mitzvah, and that's a mitzvah. That's a good thing to do, and that's a great thing to do. How can I choose? It all depends on how you prepared yourself to serve. How much you committed yourself to throw yourself all the way to connect yourself completely to the Creator. If you're willing to throw everything behind your back and really to dedicate your life to the truth, to the endless love of the Creator, to reveal His kindness to His children, then you will always gonna choose right, even when you don't know what to choose. The hand of Hashem will guide you to choose the right way, even if you're not gonna know. That is confidence in Hashem. And every person must understand that. We are not the one that are leading ourselves. We're not. You're not taking yourself in that process of tshuva. Hashem woke you up. Hashem Itbarach is the one that gives you the power. Hashem Itbarach is the one that wakes you up in the mornings. Hashem Itbarach is that one that brings those people around you to talk to you, to share with you, to tell you their heart. And you need to follow and to listen to the voice of Hashem and not to the wisdom of other people that are trying to force you to their path, to justify their actions by making you follow them. You must follow your heart and follow those signs that Hashem Barach is showing to you. And you cannot surrender and you cannot stop until you're going to accomplish what that you realize that Hashem wants from you. And that's the mission of your life. And no person in the world can come and tell you on that that you are wrong. Even if He's providing the best method, the best way, and He will tell you and He will bring proofs and evidence from that, from verses, and many people to support His shita and His way, and He's got thousands of followers and people that are surrendering to Him. If you feel that something is wrong over there, don't go. You're not allowed to go. You can find yourself in the worst place of them all, inside the thing that seems to be the right thing. You can find yourself lost and confused and, and dark and poor and sad and depressed and with no hope. And it's because that you followed someone that promised to you Beit HaMikdash, that you're going to learn Torah, that you will be close to Hashem. But He took you out of your point of truth that lives inside of you and not nowhere else in the world. Nowhere else in the world. Only inside of you the Shekhinah lives. Betoch ami anuchi yoshevet, inside of my nation. If you're part of that nation, if your will is to become part of that nation, the Shekhinah is inside of you and not outside. It's outside, you will see only darkness. You will see only coverings. You're going to see only outfits and curtains that are blocking the light of the Creator. And when you really want to find Him, you can find Him only inside. Only inside of yourself. You can take one verse that the Prophet said, and to take that amazing, fantastic verse, and to twist it, and to bend it, and to destroy people's life with the same verse that can give life to other people, if you're going to use it in the right concept, in the right way, in the right place, with the right attitude. One verse can kill, and the same verse can give life. 
So the fact that someone is offering to you something doesn't necessarily mean that it's the right thing to do. How are you going to know? How are you going to tell? Only one way, with the tools that God gave you. It's your mind and your heart, your emotions, your feeling, your senses, your thoughts. And as long as we not listening to ourselves and we're doubting ourselves all of the time, crushing our own self-esteem, destroying our own being, we're destroying our connection to the Creator. When you don't believe in yourself, you don't believe in Hashem, even if you're going 24-7 with the flag of a Jew, of a believer, or of a, I don't know what, you're going to claim, you're going to tell yourself, the man of faith, so what? The believer, the man of faith, the man of confidence, you're going to print business cards, I don't know what you're going to do. Which stories you're going to tell yourself? As long as you're not connected to the source of your life from inside. Are you living from that apple? A person can die while eating an apple. A person can die in the middle of the biggest, wonderful, most beautiful, gorgeous meal. And he will die. Food gives you life. Food doesn't give you life. Hashem gives you life. So how Hashem gives you life through that apple? Maybe there is a spiritual part inside of that apple. Where is it? On top of the apple, in the color of the apple, in the sugar of the apple, in the bitterness of the apple. Where is it? You can't find it. It's spiritual. So your connection to that apple from the spiritual side of that apple is through an inner connection. You can never choose the one apple that you will eat in the end. You can say, wow, that's the best apple in the world. And you're going to take it and you're going to say, wow, it's so yummy, I want to eat that. And you're going to come home and you're not going to find it in your bags. Why? Because Hashem took it. Why? Because it's not your sparks. You can buy for yourself something and you're going to say, wow, tomorrow after work, tonight, in the evening, I'm eating that. And you're going to come back home and the cat ate it all and that's it. And it belongs to the trash and that's it. So, why? Because it never was yours. And Hashem is the only one that knows exactly what is important to you and what is good for you. And I explained that concept on Shalom Bayit to give respect to the wife. That sometimes you take her two hours in the grocery store and you can't believe it. What is she doing over there? <laughs> She's hand-picking the cucumbers and the carrots and the, 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 the... What's going on? Why? Like, I would finish in seven minutes. Yeah, you would finish in seven minutes. And you wouldn't bring the holiest sparks that are so important and required for your family. And she will, if you're going to believe in her. If you will give her the credit because she feels things that you cannot feel because God blessed her with extra wisdom, and she can feel more. She can sense more. Yes, she can sense the difference between this cucumber that belongs to your neighbor to that cucumber that belongs to you. Between that apple that will never going to be served to your children because there is something that is wrong in that apple for your children. And you would bring that to the house, right? This is why you're not supposed to go and do that. But at least give her the credit. And don't push her. No, come on, finish, we must go. No, you can go. She needs to bring the right stuff to your house. And you need to have that faith in her. And if you don't believe in her, that she's got higher, deeper abilities than yours, that she can find the difference between seven t-shirts with the same color and the same size and she will take the fourth one in the pile, then you can't understand why. It's the same shirt, Ribbonah Shalom. No, for you, that you're ignorant, that you don't have a heart, that your fingers made out of iron or clay, you cannot feel the difference, but she feels. Why? Because she got a heart. And she got emotions, and she's aware to what that she feels, and she doesn't want to ignore herself. So you shouldn't ignore her as well. 
And you're also not supposed to ignore yourself because you also have senses and abilities. Maybe in other sections in life, maybe in other departments in the same huge place. But you must listen and follow to your inner voice because if you're not doing it, so why in the world God gave it to you? Why God installed inside of us such amazing, sensitive systems, abilities, powers of wisdom, of communication, able to see things, to close our eyes, and to visual things, and to see things, and to feel things. Why? Why memories are coming to us when we're coming to a certain place? Why we suddenly remember one person and not the other? And that thing looks so familiar and that thing looks so dark and foreign and no. And yes, why all of those things are coming? So yes, you're not supposed to lose your mind. not supposed to lose your mind after those voices. Even though that half of the people here are taking medicines. You can see that New York is crazy. Like everyone's on drugs. But... We're talking, you know, in 20 years from now, okay? Like, in the future. We will be able to sense more, to feel more. And then we're supposed to listen to the voice of Hashem that is talking to us from inside. And if you're not doing that, you're ignoring Hashem. And you can fake religion and you can fake tradition, and you can fake Hasidut, and to join yourself to a group, to, to a community, to I don't know what. It will all going to be an external hobby, something outside that you do, with no inner connection. I saw people that are going to Uman five times a year, three, minimum three or four times every year, and then doing it Bodeduyot, and they're saying Tikkun Aklali, and Mikveh every day, and Chatzot, and learning in Batei Midrash. And I can tell you that those people, they're everything else except of spiritual. Spirituality is, is like, is running away from them like, like water from fire. Can't stand them. Why? Because they're doing things for their ego. They're doing things to that people, that other people will honor them, will respect them, will give them honor, will tell them, oh, you're Hasid, oh, you're going to Uman, or you're doing this, or you're doing that, you're doing charity. They can do whatever they want. They can say whatever they want. Cruel people, evil people, awful people that can be in charge of huge, huge charity operations, and they're evil people. They're nasty people. They will insult a person in a second. They're going to destroy a person, a poor guy, in a second. They wouldn't care. They don't feel the blood on their hands. Like, they couldn't care less. And they can be huge heads of, of charity organizations. And it's all a fake. It's all a lie. And in the world to come, they're going to see it. The truth will uncover all the lies of this world. So it doesn't really matter what you do in this world. What that is important is to connect yourself to the will of Hashem. And that is that dedication that I opened this conversation with you on that. To prepare ourselves to be one with Hashem, it's something so important. That's the main thing while serving Him. To serve Him from the heart. Not to think that another page will bring you closer to Him. Not to think that another mitzvah will bring you closer to Him. Only the pure intention of your heart will bring you closer to Him. Because He is looking for your honesty. And when you will be a person of truth, and you will desire the truth, and you will be ready to pay for the truth, to sacrifice for the truth, then, in that moment, you're going to feel the pleasant of Hashem. You're going to feel the joy. You're going to feel the love. You're going to feel the connection. You're going to know that you've already been answered, that your prayer already been accepted. You'll feel the closeness to Hashem. You can live in Jerusalem. You can see the, the, the old city. You can live in the old city. You can see the western wall from your living room window. And you can be a priest. 
It, it, it's just it's a church. And not a synagogue. It can be a synagogue. And you're a sinner. And not a holy Jew. You can be wrong. In the most holiest place in the world. And you can be wrong. Totally wrong. 100% wrong. Far from the truth. Not recognizing people. Not feeling their souls, their spirits. You can be so ignorant and to think that you're so wise and gifted and talented and you're like a, a, a piece of wood. You don't have a heart, you don't have a soul, your soul is not communicating with you. Why? Because you're ignoring it. It speaks, it screams from inside all of the time, listen to me, don't go to those places. No, I must go. No, don't do that. No, I must go. I'm too afraid not to do. I must, no, I'm afraid. I'm, no. You ignore your heart. You ignore your feelings. You ignore your senses. Your spiritual wisdom, you block it. And you don't listen. A friend is calling you. You want to go to the pubs. You want to drink something. And it's clear you don't want to do that. No, I did it 1,000 times already. It's not fun. Nothing happens. Why should I do it again? I don't know who is going, who is also, who are you, when are you going? Why? Why are you cheating yourself? Why are you lying to yourself? Why are you not being honest? No, I don't think I'll come tonight. Why? I don't want to. What's the problem? I don't feel like it. Oh, what are you, crazy? What's going to happen? Oh, you're going to smoke. Oh, wow. I can smoke home, God. I didn't have to go out to smoke with you. Like, it's all good. Be who that you are, and it's okay. And you must understand and accept it, that you are who that you are. And you have to follow your own heart because God gave you a heart and if you're not going to follow your heart, so you don't need the heart. You don't need it. You don't listen to your logic, to your brain, to your wisdom, to your talents, to your abilities. You know to do something amazing, fantastic. Yes, but you can't make a living out of it. You know why you think that you cannot make a living from it? Because you never dare to follow your dreams. And you stop when your parents told you that you cannot make a living from that thing. I will show you people that are making money from things that you will never gonna dream that you can make money from those things. People make money from garbage. <laughs> Today, in those days, people are making millions from garbage. To make money, it's something that Hashem is making. Hashem can make you money out of everything that Hashem wants. A gold mine can be a zipper on a plastic bag. And they're going to make billions of dollars. And they just think it's the most silly things in the world. And just, and that's it. It's a billion dollars a year industry. And what did he do? Nothing. Something so silly. And you can come up with that idea if Hashem will want you to. You don't need to... To, to, to go and follow other people's opinions. If you have something in mind, you want to learn some profession, you want to go and, and to dedicate your life to something, you must do that. And you must understand that if we are waiting for a complete redemption, complete salvation for the world, we need people in every part of the creation. If you want that the, 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 that prophecy will, will become real, that the wolf will live in the same place with the sheep, and, and the, the, the leopard, the tiger, and the, and the deer will live together, and everything will be in harmony, you must understand that nature also needs to be healthy, needs to be happy, needs to be cured, needs to be... in develop, need to, to, to have the right environment. So we need people that will care about the nature as well. And if you, for an example, you have that inside of your heart, that you care about the nature, that you want to take care of animals, so don't think that you don't have a place, that you're out of place. You can still serve Hashem and commit yourself to Judaism, to rules of halakha, to keep Shabbat and to eat kosher and to dedicate your life to the fox, to the squirrels, to the dolphins. 
If that's your heart and really you feel that Hashem is calling you from the ocean, so you should go and follow your heart. Because Hashem really needs you over there. And if He wouldn't need you over there, He wouldn't call you from there. Hashem can call you from the synagogue, He can call you from the Beit Midrash, He can call you from Jerusalem. To one person Hashem is calling from Edom, to another person Hashem is calling him from Jerusalem, Hashem is calling you. How are you going to know where Hashem is calling you from? You need to feel. If you have a desire to learn math, to be a videographer, to edit videos all day long, to work on your computer, to make music, electronic music, I don't know what. There is a reason for that. And if you're going to follow it, you're going to understand it. It's true. In the beginning, you don't know. Hashem is saying to Abraham, Abraham Avinu, you need to go out from the house of your father to the land that I'm going to show you. To the unknown. I'm going to show you. It's true. First of all, you need to leave the house of your parents. Means your old assumptions, the old opinions, the old methods of people that are telling you that you must have at least four hours Gemara every day, that you must have at least one page of Shulchan Aruch every day, that you must have at least one hour in Bodedut every day, that you must go to the Mikveh at least once a week, that you must go... Relax. I'm not going to hold on in that speed. If you're going to ask me, are you able to follow that? That, that, that paper, that, those orders, I'm going to tell you, I'm not able. I have a wife, I have five children, I need to make some money also, I need to do some things in my life, so like, I have a big thing going on in my project, in my life, I can't do that as well, so, maybe I should drop what that Hashem woke me up to do, and I should follow some other person, that he will tell me what to do from now on, it's crazy. When you don't have a heart and you don't feel, that's something else. If you look at yourself and you don't have no talents, you don't have no desires, you don't have no understanding, okay, like nothing, okay, so you can sit 24 7 in the Beit Midrash, don't move, don't go, great, don't move, amazing. But if you have an ability, if you have a certain power, if you have certain grace, a certain beauty, a certain talent, something Hashem gave you, planted inside of you, gave you a tool, gave you a weapon, you cannot ignore that. Because with that ability, you can make lives. You can save lives of people. A person can use his talents to serve Hashem with those talents. And people that will look at you and will see you, they will be charmed by you. They will follow you. And only because that you are an amazing basketball player. Yes. And also you keep keeping Shabbat. Wow, that's amazing. If you wouldn't know how to play basketball, they wouldn't talk to you. Those teenagers, 15, 14 years old, they will talk to you only because you're playing with them in the afternoon in the neighborhood basketball court. And that's the only reason they're going to communicate with you. Great? Wonderful. After two weeks, after two months, after two years, one of them is going to tell you, Hey, you know I'm also Jewish? And then you're going to understand why you had to, 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 to play basketball for the last couple of years here in that neighborhood. Something will happen. You like fishing. You like going, hiking. You like go traveling. You want to go to the Far East. Listen to me. Go. If you're going to find Hashem, go. If you're going to find yourself, go. If you go to kill yourself on drugs, you don't need that. You don't need to go to the Far East. You can kill yourself here. Like, right behind that wall. You can <laughs> die over there if you want. It's like, it's so easy to die here from drugs. Like, 20% are doing it. It's more beautiful to die in a country. Okay. <laughs> you have a nice country. Yeah, for me, it's foreign here, so basically talking the same language. If you look at the moon, you die. It's crazy. So the thing is, 
that when you go to find Hashem, the thing that you will find is Hashem. No matter where you're going to go, you're going to find Hashem. Physically, in the physical world, if you want to buy something, so it's a process, even if you have the money. It will take you five minutes. Even if you're going to buy through Amazon, it will take three days, two days if you paid extra. It will take two days to come to your house. Great, wonderful. It's a process. In the physical world, to achieve things, it takes time. Because the physical world is inside that dimension of time limits. And you have to go through a process of making it, of buying the things, of preparing it, of cooking it, and then serving it, and then chewing it, and then swallowing it. It's a process. It takes time. But in the real world, in the spiritual world, in the world of Hashem, nothing takes time. The connection with Hashem is beyond time. If you want to be with Hashem, there He is. You don't need to do anything. I want to believe in Hashem. Here is Hashem. Now, I want to be in touch with Hashem. I'm touching Hashem. I can talk to Him. Hi Hashem, how are you? What's going on? We're here together. It didn't took me a second. Why? Because in the spiritual world, Everything is in the present. Everything is here and now and with you. And you're surrounded and it's inside of you. And Hashem is everything and everywhere. So now, you want to learn how to be close to Hashem? So be with Hashem. You want to follow some other person guidings that he will tell you how to come closer to Hashem? Okay, do that. But it's a different world. It's a physical world. In the physical world, you can do things physically. You want to learn halachot? Great. It might be a physical process of you learning, memorizing those rules, and it will take you time to learn. Great, you can do that. But to be with Hashem, it's not something that you should do something for. Where is Hashem? Here. He's here, right now. I don't need to do anything that Hashem will be here with me. Hashem is here with me. If I want it, and if I want to ignore from it, Hashem is here. Hashem was here before I came. And He will stay here after I'm going to go. Hashem is everywhere. You want to really be connected to Hashem in Barach? So just be. So just think about Hashem. And don't ignore Him. And now you realize that you need to learn Gemara? Great! So learn Gemara with Hashem. No problem. But don't think that Hashem is far. Because someone told you that you need to learn Gemara. It's crazy. Hashem is not dependent in your Gemara learning. Hashem is not dependent in how much Shalachot you're going to learn. Hashem loves you. Hashem created you. He brought you out to the world from His own inside. From His own breath. From His own soul. He made you in His shape. Hey, but He doesn't have a shape. So maybe he's got a shape? No, it's written that he doesn't have a logoof, a lodmuta goof. He doesn't have a body, he doesn't have a shape. So how he made me in a shape? I have a shape. No, you don't have a shape. That body is not you. That body is your body. That's not who that you are. You are chelek eloka mimal. You are part of heaven. You are a holy soul. You are a divine soul. You are a light of God. You're a beam of light. You don't have no shape. You're endless. That's who that you really are. You're not your body. Your body is your vehicle. It takes you from one place to the other and it's stuck for half an hour in the bathroom between those two meetings. That's your body. That's not you. You're not stuck when you're with Hashem. Some person asked me once, I want to talk to Hashem. And the only place that I really feel connected to Hashem is when I'm in the shower. Great, great question, right? It's an amazing question. What you should do? Why? Because they've been taught that you're not allowed to learn Torah when, while you're showering. You're not allowed when you're naked to think about Hashem. Who said so? Maybe you're not supposed to learn Torah. Okay, it's a halacha. But to think about Hashem, do you think that Hashem is not with you over there when you're showering? Hashem is with you over there. 
Hashem is with you in the most contaminated places, in the darkest places, in the lowest places. Hashem is always with you. The only thing that you should do to connect yourself to Him is to remember Him. That's the only thing you should do to think about Him. When you think about Him, you're with Him. The Alchai is saying that you're not allowed to say verses in the bathroom. Great, don't say verses. But to think about Hashem, it doesn't really know where. But people are doubting themselves and questioning, oh, what I'm going to do? You feel connected when you're running, so you must run. You feel connected when you're showering, so go to the shower. What's the problem? If that's where you find your connection, there is nothing bad with that. Do you know what water means? Do you know what's the effect when the water are washing you and cleaning you? Do you understand what happens to you when you shower? No, you don't. So why you question yourself? If you feel connection, so you feel connection. If you feel connected when you hear music, so what's the problem with that? That that rabbi doesn't like it? He doesn't have to hear that music. It's okay. You're not forcing him to listen to your music. If you like art, if you like to paint, if you like to swim, if you like the forest, if you, if you like the desert, so what? If you like sushi, so what? Feel comfortable with who that you are. Do you know what it means that you eat sushi? One person hates sushi. For him it seems like nonsense, for, but maybe it doesn't feed him and that's why he feels so far from it. Maybe it's not good for his diet, for his body. Maybe his sparks are not inside those sushi plates. But maybe you do have spiritual sparks. I don't know why, but the Hashem knows. And he put those sparks in green vegetables, in meat, in dairy, in sushi, in I don't know what. So what's the problem? Why that you not gonna eat something because someone else feels that this is oh it's 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 not right, it's not okay. Who, who are you? Kashrut. Kashrut is something else. Kashrut is something else. If you feel that you don't want to keep kashrut, it's your decision. I'm not telling you keep kashrut. I'm telling you that me, as a Jewish person, I feel obligated and I feel that I need to be loyal to the rules of Judaism. That's what I feel as a person. And to remind you, I was 100% secular in my life, in my life, when I, until the age of 20, 21, I didn't keep Shabbat, I didn't keep Kashrut. But when I start thinking about my Judaism, so I felt that I want to have a part with that nation. And then I start to think about that. What does it mean? And then I realized that they, because I was very far from them, in my faith, in my understanding, I realized that they are keeping kashrut, that they are keeping Shabbat, that they are learning Torah. And I said to myself, okay, let's taste it. Let's try it. And I was inspired. I felt happy. I kept Shabbat and I felt it was an uplifting Shabbat. It was an amazing Shabbat, inspiring Shabbat. I started eating kosher, I felt more right with myself. So I kept on doing that, and that's why I'm doing it. I'm not doing it because someone told me that I have to. Me, I'm not working for no one. I'm not, I'm not able. There are people that it's good for them to work. I'm not able to work for no one. I don't know, I don't have it. Everyone goes with his talents, with how Hashem made him. If you're able to surrender yourself to a system and it's a good thing for you, okay, it's great. I'm not criticizing. I don't have anything against it. If that's what you feel. Me, myself, I'm a rebel. I have to, I, I, I don't know. That's me. At least that's what my teachers thought. <laughs> I was the only one that had the approval in school to walk and not to sit in class. And everything. <laughs> Was allowed to paint and to go out, not asking permission. That's me. What can I do? Should I fight with that? No. I was always honest and I didn't want to sit in class and I was honest enough to say it and it was very clear that I don't want to do that. So they accepted me. You must be who that you are because God made you to be who that you are. And you are 100% unique and special. And you just need to express it. And to connect yourself to that, and to realize what does it mean 
who I really am. And like I said many, many times to those ones that are following and listening to my classes, I said it so many times. To know who you are, it's not the biggest mission of them all. It's actually kind of easy. You know who you are. You know which kind of music you like. You know what's your favorite food. You know what's the favorite colors. You know what you like to dress. You know what you hate. You know which people you enjoy with. Who are the people that you can't stand their company. You know exactly who you are. You know if you like to play, you know if you like to run, you know if you like sports, if you like to, to rest, if you, if, if, I don't know, you know yourself. It's easy to know who you are. The hard part is to believe that it's important, that Hashem appreciates you with who that you are, that Hashem Barach, He loves you and He enjoys your company and He appreciates you and He's proud of you. And he's telling all of his friends, all of the angels over there in heaven, look at my son, look at my daughter, look how honest she is, look how amazing he is, look how powerful he is, look how inspiring she is, look how honest she is, look how straight he is, how amazing he is, how great he is, how generous he is. And for you, only criticism, and you feel so bad, and look at me, and I'm so lazy, and Hashem is happy. My son, he's resting, I'm happy. You need those hours. You, it's hard for you to accept that you need those hours. You feel like you're wasting your life. But it's only that foreign thought. It's only that negative thought. It's that criticism. That's Lashon HaRa on you. If you need those hours for your rest, and after you're going to wake up in couple, of, couple of, in couple of hours from now, then you will be okay, and you will be positive, and you will develop a little bit. One step you're going to make today, you're going to wash your hands, you're going to wash your face, you're going to make one nice friendly phone call to a friend of yours, and you're going to go back to sleep. But you did something good with your day, it's good for you. Do you know from how much bad Hashem saved you? A person asked me a few days ago, she said, I'm trying to do it bodedut, and when I'm talking to Hashem, I'm falling asleep. And now, and then I start hearing the negativity, and I'm doing tshuva on that. It's such a disgrace to fall asleep in front of the king. I answered to her, listen, it's written that you, Hashem, you're the one that makes me fall asleep. So while you're talking to him, he's trying to do something with you. And he puts you down to sleep. Maybe it's part of your healing process. Maybe it's a holy sleep. Maybe there are things that you cannot experience while you're awake. Maybe there are certain things, spiritual things, that you must go through. And when your eyes are open, you cannot experience them. So maybe that's why he's putting you to sleep. Do you know what's going on with you when you're asleep, when you're eating, when you're drinking, when you're walking? Rabbi Yosef Karo, one of the righteous people, he had an angel that was always telling him things, what to do and how to behave and what to learn and which book to open and where to go and when to drink and when to sleep. Everything he told him from heaven. One time that angel was angry at him. Why? Because one of his footsteps, while he was walking on the beach, yes, Rabbi Yosef Karo, the one that wrote Shulchan Aruch, he was walking on the beach, yes, yes, yes. So he was walking on the beach, and he didn't have the right intention while lifting his right leg while walking over there on the sand. Okay? You know what it means for me? You're going to say, wow, he was so holy. Every footstep was so important. I'm telling you about ourselves that he was just aware to those angels. He was just aware, aware enough to hear those voices that we're ignoring from. But when you walk, you also have that feeling of not stepping on that tile and not to walk from the right side of that tree and maybe now I'm going to go off the sidewalk and maybe I'm going to cross the street right now and maybe, you know what, I'm not going to do it, I'm going to cross the street after that red car, after that blue car. 
Why? Not because you're crazy. No, it's not because you smoke. When you smoke, you can hear those voices a little bit louder. But it happens to you. Maybe you smoke all the time, I don't know. But it happens to you always, and not only to you. It happens to everyone all of the time. Just we're not attached, not aware to how important every footsteps of ours is. Because Hashem in Barach is putting it into your heart to cross the street right now. And there are so many combinations and so many things that are happening spiritually that you cannot see, that you cannot recognize with your physical eyes. And only your heart and your soul are recognizing those voices. And you must be aware to who that you are, to that spiritual guiding, the merciful hand of the Creator that is taking you in the path of life. Why you miss that bus? Why you miss that train? Why you have to be stuck now in traffic? You don't know. Your soul, your aura, your light is so much greater and bigger than you that it experiences things outside of your body all of the time. And you don't know. You're now sitting in your car and you don't know how many things are happening between you and the person that sits in the next car and also in the next car. And you don't know that. But your souls are meeting right now in traffic. His thoughts and your thoughts, the good thoughts and the music and the radio, and it's all connected. Here in this world, you cannot see it. Because we're blind. And we're blind only because we're trying to use our physical eyes that are limited. But our soul is not limited. That's why we must count on the voice of our soul, our inner voice. The voice of Hashem. Ki pi Hashem diber alechem. The mouth of Hashem is talking to you from all of the mouths of all of the people. All of the voices. Besod event is akmikir in the secret of a brick that is screaming from the walls. Palm trees that are talking to you. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakai, the Ariya Kadosh, they had the ability to understand the conversation between the palm trees. It doesn't mean that the palm trees are now quiet because you can't hear them. They're talking, and all the animals are talking, and the creation is singing, and the leaf, and the grass, and, and the smoke, everything is communicating and flowing and the waves, and the sea, and there are angels, and spirits, and everything is so colorful, and gorgeous. And we choose to ignore from it, by ignoring our inner connection through our soul to the Creator. The main thing to do is to meditate and to do hit bodeduyot, and hit bonenuyot, and to look, and to observe, and to talk to Hashem, and to open your heart, and to go to a place that you will feel comfortable at, and to talk, and to express your heart, and to tell Hashem, and to ask for Hashem, and to force Hashem to things, and to tell Him we must change those things. We must bring redemption to the world. And to convince Hashem, and to win Him with our prayers. Until he will say, Nitzchoni Banai, my children, they won. That's his real will, that we're going to lead him. Tzaddik Moshe Nirat Elohim, the righteous man, he is leading Hashem. That Hashem wants something to happen, then the righteous man is saying no. And that the righteous man, he wants something, and Hashem is following his request. That's the will of Hashem. And it's true. In the end, it will be Mashiach that will bring all of those miracles. But we want to join Him. We want to be part of His army. The army of Ben David. We want to prepare ourselves to that wonderful day that when Mashiach will come and will talk to us, we will be ready. We won't have no doubts. As long as you're doubting yourself that you can become a soldier of Mashiach, you cannot be a soldier of Mashiach. Only when you're going to realize that you don't need to be a genius to have a part in the redemption of Am Yisrael. That you don't need to be righteous to have a part in the wide world redemption. You don't need to. 
Also, in the complete redemption, we're going to have to have someone to take care of the dolphins, someone to take care of the universe, of the globe, of, 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 of money, of, 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 of communication. We're going to have to have so many people to edit videos. We're going to have to have people with camera, with equipment, with, with, with knowledge in voice, in sound. We're going to have to use all technology. The Lubavitcher Rebbe said, Mashiach will come through the internet. Can you understand the power of internet? It means that me, I'm 39 years old as of today. Oh, <laughs> How much were you smoking before you came to the <laughs> So... And I already taught something like 500 years on YouTube and Facebook together. Do you understand what it means that Mashiach can come through the internet? That you can live only, let's say, 39 years, but you can teach 500 years. How can it be? Hours on hours on hours of videos of people that heard me speaking and I'm not enough to give all of those hours, but Hashem can do that. Every video, every piece of information that is online is eternal. It became to be eternal. It will never going to go off. It will never going to disappear. It's over there. And it's always going to stay there for the next generation, for the next generation. Every part of a physical creation now suddenly received a spiritual dimension inside the physical world. Where is it contained? In the cloud. Great. Clouds of honor <laughs> are containing so much Torah and so much purity and inspiring message. In Hashem Barak, there is only one thing that is connecting today all of the people around the world, or at least most of the people, and soon become all the people around the world. It's that screen that TV, that mobile phone, that smartphone, that's the only thing that we all have in common. And if you're going to judge yourself and going to say, oh, I'm wasting my time, I'm always with my phone, I'm this, I'm that, I'm going to tell you that there is another side to look at it. Because if you're going to check what you're holding in your phone, you're going to understand that you have all of your contacts, it's your friends, it's your family, it's the people that are around you, that you like, that you love. Also, all of the information that you like, the videos that you like, all of the things that you decide to subscribe to, all the things that are interesting for you in your life, the apps that you like, you using things that you like, the SoundCloud, the music, all kinds of things that are important to you. You have a connection to your bank through that, to friends, to whatever. It's a spiritual door that Hashem made for people that are not able to do that spiritual connection from inside. So Hashem had mercy and revealed for them a way of communication. Today you can learn every rule of halakha, of Judaism that you want through Google. You can ask Siri and she's going to answer you. Questions in halakha, it's crazy. And women are not allowed to be rabbis at all. <laughs> today, I asked, I asked, today I asked Siri a question. And she answered me. And then I said, thank you very much. I, I felt like I need to say thank you. So she told me, it's so nice of you to say that. <laughs> so I told her, it sounds like you're human. So she said, if that's what you think. <laughs> so, what's going on with her? <laughs> So, with that, we're going to finish. We're all going to pray for the success of Siri, Bezat Hashem. <laughs> Siri Batsala. <laughs> Siri Batchava. We're all going to pray for Siri Batchava. Siri but Ask him, what's her full name? What's her mother's Jewish name? Siri, what's your mother's Jewish name? <laughs>
Boys, I thank you very much. Believe in yourself. If you're going to believe in yourself, people will have the ability to believe you, to follow you, to listen to you. As long as you don't believe yourself, no one can hear you. No one. You don't have your confidence that is required for other people to follow you. Thank you very much. Hazak this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.